Welcome back to part two of this mini series on designing a forklift in Space Engineers. Last time we built the core model completely from scratch. This time we're going to take a look inside the control panel settings as well as do a masterful job on the paintwork to give us that industrial finish. Let's go. All right, and this is what we've ended up with. This is the final design. This is what you've probably all seen on the thumbnail. Um, now, what we're going to do now, not everyone shows this part because it can be quite tedious, but I think it's important when demonstrating a build to include how you configure all the internals, show off the paintwork, that kind of thing. Let's get in here. In fact, let's do it. Three. Let's grab this. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this to this. So it looks exactly the same. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our groups. Groups are important. Groups help you keep some kind of structure to your control panel, uh, especially helpful if you have a lot of ships and rovers like docked up to your main base or to your, your mothership, for example. Um, I do also like to prefix the groups with the name of the grid. So let's just rename this. Uh, just put FMM forklift. Okay, so I've gone ahead and grouped up all the batteries, the cog containers, the gyroscopes, the locking landing gear pistons and plates, all the lights, the forklift magnetic plates, both the reactors and the wheels. Uh, once grouped up, you can hide all of the extra stuff from the terminals, including the stuff you grouped. Bear in mind that not everything needs a group. So if you look in here, I didn't group the artificial mass box. They don't need a group. There's no settings to change. If you could turn, you maybe you could because you want to maybe turn them on and off. But that's entirely up to you. If you want to group them, go right ahead. Now, one thing you should do, uh, you should go ahead and rename everything. Now, you can do that for going in here and just copying and pasting your tag, your chosen tag to the beginning of each block. But there is a better way. What you can do is you can install a mod called Easy Block Renaming. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're back in the game. What we can do is go down the list, find everything that needs the prefix, hold shift, select it all. So left click on the first thing, scroll down, Shift, left click on the second thing, or the last thing. And then in the new naming, type your tag and then just click prefix name. And that's gonna add the word forklift to the beginning of everything. Now, the reason you wanna do this, if you've got this docked up to your ship or your base or whatever, you're gonna have a huge list of things in this list. Obviously now what I can do is I can search for forklift and I'll only get those blocks. Uh, it's very handy just for sorting things, and it also stops people messing with your things. If someone's trying to change the settings on their battery, but yours is also called Small Battery 3, they don't know that they're doing something wrong. So uh, I really do wish Keen would have added something here to allow us to separate this. Like we've got this remote access up here. I can choose the my character or the forklift grid. I really wish there would be a way to filter what grid you're actually looking at in this list. Now let's go through the settings here. So what I've done, the batteries, I've set those to recharge. Uh, these are emergency batteries. They should only really be turned on in an emergency. 
the rest of the time they're just going to be recharging from the reactors. Okay, the gyroscopes, what I've done here is I've just locked them to override with zero in all the settings. It's just going to help keep this nice and stable. Uh, for the landing gear, sorry, landing gear plates, I've left those on auto lock. And the pistons, uh, we actually need to change the maximum distance. I think it's 0.6. Let's see. Yes, perfect. So the reason I've set 0.6 is because when I lock these down, I don't want to be lifted up in the air with it. 0.6 gives me that just a little bit of reach, just enough to reach the floor. Now for the lifting magnetic plates, I've turned off auto lock because I want to be able to choose when this thing grabs something. There's no point getting pretty close to a wall and getting locked to it and having to unlock and all that messing around. Uh, and for the pistons, these I've set the... Uh, oh. Why the pistons? Oh, because the pistons have magnetic plates in there as well. Okay, that's not what we want. Let's uh, untick these. And now that group should just be the pistons. So we get the options down here. That's great. Yeah, so for these pistons, we can leave that set as the maximum distance of two meters. That's just going to enable the, uh, the lift at the front. Once we've got the button set up, that's just going to fully extend all the way up. Okay, last one is wheels. Now you probably saw me set the wheel settings. Uh, I've done a lot of testing in this world. There's, there's buggies and stuff everywhere. These, these settings are what we need for this vehicle. It needs to have a really, a really short steering angle because of how the wheels are very close to the blocks on the build itself. Uh, power, I've just I put this down to 30 just because we we want room to be able to move that up and down. Strength, I put it as 50 because it's going to be carrying a lot of weight. So I don't want the bottom to be grating across the floor. Uh, friction, I've turned the wheel friction up just to give us a little bit of extra grip. Um, whether that's useful or not, I don't know. And lastly, we've just turned the speed limit way down because 180 kilometers an hour is just too fast for this thing. Too much power. We want this to move nice and slow. Uh, these settings here, these are what are right for me. It's personal preference. You should absolutely go and test this yourself. So to test this, literally copy and paste your build. Drop it out in the world. Crash into it. Go into uh, third person mode so you can actually play around. Drive around and actually actively try to tip it upside down. You know, if you're going around, just hold hold forward and, and left and just try and tip it up. If it's not looking like it's going to tip upside down, you've done it right. If I turn these settings up, I'll freak out with the controls. Wheels, let's, let's just for example, let's put this back to, what was it, 180? That's the default. Let's put 50 here, uh, 20. I think this is 60. I think this is like... Me. Something like that. Uh, so let's do these are the default wheel settings. So you can see here, right? This this is no longer a stable device. It's trying it's actually handling better than I thought, but it does literally tip upside down eventually, especially when it's carrying something. Maximum speed. Oh look there. Oh. Could also be the angle of the hill that I'm on. So some speed. And that way, oh. Doing a wheelie for some reason. Ah, there we go. I mean, the uh, the gyroscopes are definitely helping out there. So, also, yeah, that's a good point. Gyroscopes, let's turn those off. Yeah, so the gyroscopes literally... The gyroscopes were absolutely the uh, MVP right there. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. Get rid of this. Actually, let's leave it. There's a ton of uh, dead forward lift soul flying around this place. Okay, yeah, let's just check out some of the individual details. So we've got these X's here. We've got these lights set up at the back. They're a dark red at the minute. You can't really see them. Uh, there you go. So you can see there, you got that bright red with the LCDs there with the construction and the danger signs. 
And of course, on top, we've got these lovely little rotating lights just so that you know this thing is working hard. Okay, last of all is probably the thing people forget about is the cockpit. So you can completely configure these screens and stuff in the cockpit screen. It's completely optional, but I think it adds a nice little bit of spice. All I've done here is change the background of each of the LCDs to completely black. Uh, and then I've added a orangey, dark orange text color. Kind of like a 90s Nokia phone for all you OG Snake fans out there. And that's that's it. That's the, that's the settings. So... The last thing we've kind of got to do to this bit before we move on to uh, the alternative versions is just to paint it. So I've got here the trusty paint gun mod. So you can download this from the workshop. The paint gun mod is one of the best mods in the game. Uh, and I'm going to leave my screen on like this so you can see the settings on the side. So we can use the paint gun mod. You can just use the normal built-in paint mechanics in Space Engineers, but with a build that's got as much detail as this and it's very intricate, you're going to struggle actually targeting the right block with paint. So what the paint gun does, mod, paint gun mod does it actually, you see the little green marker, the little outline of every block, it tells you what you're actually targeting, which is very handy. Now also what you can do, uh, similar to the base paint game, you can hold shift P to grab the color, shift and right mouse button. Okay, so if you if you target a block that you want to grab the color and the texture off, you can hold shift and right mouse button. And then if we go across to our current build, and then we use shift and left mouse button. Sorry, shift and middle mouse button. Nope. Oh, sorry, we need to set it to replace mode. So shift and I. And then you can see we're in replace a color mode. So what will happen now is if I left click, that replaces everything with the same color on the subgrid that it's on. So let's let's just paint everything in this hazard yellow first. There we go. Right. So everything's the same color now. Now I do like the hazard paint, but it really is not great when it's, it doesn't line up properly. So what I like to do is I like to break that up with some black battered armor. And of course, if you leave, <laughs> if you leave replace mode on, that helps massively. Let's just grab that. There we go. And then if we go back here, choose this battered armor, turn off replace mode. And what we're going to do is we're just going to spray those like that. That already looks so much better with just that little bit of detail work. So then what we're going to do, we're going to also do these on the front. And yeah, we did that as well. Uh, we did the wheels. Now, the wheels are kind of tricky to target when you're just using... If I'm just trying to use a block here. It kind of... Like, I, can, I can get it because I've obviously done this before, but if we try and maybe get the back ones, I know that's going to work, cool. Obviously now that I'm showing it on screen, it's <laughs> working perfectly, but the paint gun mod just makes it a little bit easier. You Just having that box around the thing that you're trying to paint makes things so clear. Uh, next up, let's grab this, uh, this chrome texture, place that on the wheels. Uh, let's do this bit. All right, let's grab these lights. And now you know the uh, the block we put in the middle to put the lights on? That would have been impossible to try and target with the vanilla paints. But there, there we go. And because I've got mirror mode on... Oh, I don't have mirror mode on on the subgrid. Oh, well, my bad. All right, yeah, we need to go underneath. Let's go underneath. Uh, let's grab our landing lock pistons. Let's reverse those. And actually, let's put the max distance way up. 
because we need to get underneath. Uh, let's do these. There we go. Uh, let's get back in the seat. Let's reverse those. I will add these to the action bar as well, actually. Okay, so on the action bar, what we're going to do, because we've got our group set up, we are going to add in some tools. So the lifting pistons, I think, because this is the predominant use of this vehicle, I'm going to put that on number one, as well as the lifting magnetic plates. I'm going to switch lock on those. Uh, let's also do the landing lock pistons on number four. Let's do the landing lock magnetic plates there. This can be recharge on or off for the batteries. And let's do um, override controls on or off on the gyro as well. And last one, I'll just put lights. Toggle lights on and off. So now we can, one, turn the lights on and off. It's great. Uh, we can raise and lower the arm from raising lower ourselves. Of course, they were already locked. Oh, that lets us do a little jump. That's exciting. I did not realize I could do that. I've missed a bit of paint as well because it's on a subgrid, of course. There we go. And there we have it. One fully finished, painted, detailed, decorated forklift. Okay, doc, that is it for part two. We've set up the control panel settings and we've painted this thing. In part three, we're going to be looking at three different variants of this build with a view to testing them all out in part four. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Hopefully I will catch you in the next video. Catch you later.